Hey everyone, it's Matt Frazier and Alexa Frazier. And I'm on the world's smallest microphone, but I'm making a really big announcement, and that is my new book. Okay, Don't Wait Till You're Dead is now available for you to order. And at the end of the segment, I'm going to have something really exciting to talk about. So make sure that you watch till the end. But I have my wife here because she still hasn't read it. I have the first copies here. And I want to share with you exactly what it was like to write this book, why I want to write it. And we're going to be answering the questions that you've been dying to ask me about this book and about the life review. So Alexa, what have the fans been asking? Well, you know, listen, your fans are, no pun intended, diehard fans. And I'll tell you, they are going to be so excited when they get this book. Now, where can we order this right now? Like, where could I, could I put this in my Amazon cart? Well, right now you want to get it on premiercollectibles.com okay. because that's where you can get, well, I'm gonna, I don't want to tease it. All right. You know, I'm a medium. I have to tell you everything. So you're going to be able to get a signed copy, but... <gasps> Yes. No way. Yes, but wait, I'm going to tell you how at the end of the segment, so you got to watch. I'm going to tell you the reason why, how to get it, all the deets. You're going to make us wait all the way to the end? Yes, I am. <sighs> okay, fine. Listen, some things are worth waiting for. Look at that's yeah. how you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. And I think we can flip that around. Too. Actually, you follow me on Instagram first, but let's get back to the book. <laughs> well, listen, you know that, you know, a lot of people follow you for all different reasons. Some are mediums themselves. Some just want to learn about mediumship. Or some are like me where I was terrified of death before I met you. And I had no idea what was on the other side. I didn't even know there was another side. So thank you for teaching me all that you know. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of people are going to want this book to find these things out, you know, to you're the only one that can see on the other side. We well, actually, actually, we all can get little glimpses and, and images of the other side. It's just opening yourself up and really trusting the ways that spirit is trying to connect with you. What's really cool is that the more that we learn about heaven and the afterlife and what happens when we die, the more that we learn that, first of all, we're not alone. Our loved ones in spirit are here. But there's a reason why our loved ones watch over us and are able to watch over us. And there's also a reason why they're at peace on the other side. And it's because of something called the life review. So that's the reason why I wanted to write this book, because the life review happens the moment that we pass on and the moment that we go to the other side. You know, you may have heard of people have having near-death experiences where mm -hmm. a tunnel of white light opens up, and then next thing you know, they're leaving their body. They're seeing people who had passed before them. So is that the life review? Can you tell us, like, what is the life review? So what it's is exactly starts the life review. Well, that's a loaded question. I wrote a whole freaking book about well, it. I, I want to know it. I want to know the answer. All right. I'm going to tell you as best as I can. The life review happens immediately after death, and it's a look back on your life. It's a big movie, a big documentary from the moment that you were born to the moment that you left this world and everything in between. You see who your wow. soulmate was. Who wasn't your soulmate? That high school sweetheart versus your husband or your wife now. What do you mean now? Are you ended up with me? I don't have a high school sweetheart, so it's you or no one. <laughs> but when you look back, you get to see, what if I went down this road instead of that road? What if I became an accountant instead of going and working in the medical field, right? All of those questions that you've been dying to really know the answer to within life, those are all answered during your life review. And not only that, you meet your spirit guide. You meet your guardian angel and you meet your loved ones in heaven. Some of the loved ones in heaven, you know, some of them you don't, but they've been with you on this entire journey and your loved ones in spirit have a lot to share. They share with you every way that they've helped you within life and the way that they've helped you from the afterlife. Well, so now that you mentioned spirit guides, so, um, what are the roles of our spirit guides? Like what exactly are they there to do for us? Are they, Hey, I've been waiting for you. Like once you enter the pearly gates, like what is their role? Exactly? So your spirit guide was assigned to you at birth. And what's so beautiful is that your spirit guide is someone that you don't know. So your spirit guide isn't like a brother or an aunt or a grandmother. I know a lot of people are... are well, I was going to say, you know, like my grandma, my stepdad passed. Like maybe he's waiting or guiding me now, now that he passed. But that's interesting. Well, he's guiding you, but he's not your spirit guide. Spirit guide is an actual job, right? Okay. Just like a barista. We can make our coffee at home, but you're never going to get that Starbucks flavor unless you go to sure. Starbucks, right? It's an actual job. So your spirit guide was somebody who lived here on earth, has died, has crossed over to the other side... And they took a likening to you. So what that means is, is that before you were even born, your spirit guide knew that you were going to be born. 
knew what your role here on earth was, whether you're a helper, a healer, whether you're a manifester, a visionary, whatever your gift is, your spirit guide knows about that. They know about the challenges and struggles that you're going to go through. And your spirit guide is there to really help you. Your spirit guide is there to help you meet your soulmate, mm -hmm. to go and find your gifts, talents, and abilities that you were born with, to further enhance those, those uh, gifts and talents and abilities. But your spirit guide is also there to lead you through the challenges and the struggles that are going to teach you the greatest lessons in life. So that is a little, like you said, good and bad. So this is all wonderful and fun, but I want to know the juicy stuff. Okay. So I want to know if there had, if you've done a reading or if you've been at an event and someone's spirit guide came through and told them maybe something they did not want to know, or they're going to be doing something that they didn't want to do. Should I be worried about that? Well, you listen, know, listen, it's true. Type a, so I'm a little nervous of what my spirit guide has in store for me. So tell me if that's happened before. Well, it happened to me, right? And that was my story is that when I first was going and starting my journey as a medium, I had no idea I was a psychic medium. Yes, I would see and hear dead people, but I didn't know that there was something special about me. What was crazy is, is that I always felt people on a different level. I could feel people's pain. I could feel people's emotions. I could feel what other people were going through. So I actually started my journey in the medical field. I thought I was supposed to be in the medical field, helping people on the physical level. And it wasn't until I went to see a medium myself that my grandmother, my spirit guide came through and said, you're on the wrong path. Wow. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize I was on the wrong path. It was something that I didn't want to hear. I wanted to hear that I was going to be an EMT and I was on the right path helping what people. What a blessing. I mean, I, that's pretty lucky. I, if everyone got that, I mean, that would be amazing to just know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. No, well, you think that, guy. you think that, but when you put all the hard work in of being an EMT, you think you have your life all figured out and then you're told, no, you're on the wrong path. You're like, what do you mean I'm on the wrong path? I, I work so hard for this. How is it that I'm on the wrong path? Well, mm -hmm. that's what happened to me. And it wasn't until I realized I was using my gift in a different way. I was helping people on the physical level. Really what I was supposed to be doing was helping people on the emotional level. And, wow. you know, I fought it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I followed that path that I discovered my true life purpose where I am now. And that's what I want to share with other people, right? There's times when I'm doing a reading and your spirit guide will tell you, unfortunately, that's not your soulmate. You're not going to get married. Well, you would say that, but you know, I've seen it happen. And I know mm -hmm. some of you have had this happen as well, where you may have been with somebody that you thought was your soulmate, that you thought you were going to get married to, that you thought you were going to have children with. And unfortunately, this person you know, ended up being a waste of time. And this person was someone that, you know, unfortunately led you down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we have spirit guides because we have life partners. We have soulmates and our spirit guide is meant to really help us on track to determine who it is that's going to be the best influential within our life and who's going to help us have that dream life that we want. Mm -hmm. Our spirit guide is responsible for all of that. So when we're on the wrong path, our spirit guide absolutely will tell us that. And no, it's not information that people want to hear, but at the end of the day, it's going to help them to the more meaningful relationships and connections that are waiting for them. Wow. As you just said, you've had a pretty, I mean, going from EMT to psychic medium and now writing this book. Don't wait until you're dead. I mean, that's pretty incredible. So now that you've been through, you know, your life journey and your spirit guides telling you what you're going to be doing, now you're writing books such as this about everything that you've learned, which is like crazy. How has writing this book changed you like as an individual? You know, it's so funny. So when I wrote my last book, I thought I was done for a while. The thing is, is that I realize as a medium now that I'm never going to be done because every single day I'm learning something new about heaven, the afterlife, the other side. You know, as much as I'm learning, I'm trying to share with all of you. And what I really realized by, by writing this book is that we all have different hardships that we go through in life. And for every single person that goes through a hardship, it's something that nobody else can experience or explain because... Only that person feeling it, know what it's, knows what it's like. The loss of a child, the loss of a job, the loss of a significant other, anxiety, fears, worries, right? It's all about our human life here on earth. And it's really hard. Life is challenging. Life is difficult. Life is hard. But life is also meant to have moments to be enjoyed as well. Mm -hmm. So what I learned about in writing this book is that we all have different levels of pain. We all have different levels of hard. It's about aligning with your spirit guides, your guardian angels, and learning what our meaning of life is, right? We're here for a greater reason. We're here on earth for one reason. Well, actually many reasons, mm -hmm. but one is to learn about the life that we're living right now. 
We're meant to learn life lessons. We're meant to inspire others. We're meant to use those life lessons later on. And we're also meant to leave this world, to transition onto the afterlife, and bring all of that knowledge that we've learned here on Earth to the other side. Well, that now brings me to my next question, because I know someone like me, I have anxiety, and I'm sure a lot of viewers um, also suffer from anxiety. The world's a crazy place now. Yes, it is. Um, So, you know, sometimes I know my anxiety can hold me back. So is there a chance that I'm going to regret something on the other side? Like, do we feel regret once we pass and go through the life review, maybe feel that we've almost failed our spirit guides and kind of not done what they wanted us to do. And now we regret. So our, we never fail our spirit guides, but there are regrets that happen on the other side. Your yeah. spirit guide, no, seriously, your spirit guide is a GPS, right? It's like when you have a GPS in your car and the car is telling you to go right, but yet you go left, mm-hmm. right? Or the spirit guide is saying, saying, take this exit, but you take that exit. Mm-hmm. What happens is, is that when it comes to the other side, your spirit guide is navigating you guiding wow. you and helping you through these different roadblocks. But it's up to you whether you're following their path or not. Meaning they're saying you can take this road or this road. Mm-hmm. But what I can tell you is this, is that when it comes to the other side, we all are going to have regrets. There are certain things in life that we wish that we would have done differently. The truth is, is that once we get to the other side, we reflect on these times. And it's really about the life lessons that we learned. And on the other side, that's why our loved ones watch over us. If you ever wondered, Why are our loved ones there? Why are they watching over us from the other side? Well, there's certain regrets that your loved ones in spirit have that they don't want you to have. You know, for example, I was reading for this woman who had lost her father and he was an alcoholic here in this world. He spent so much of his life drinking and causing issues with the family and he gave into this addiction. It pulled the whole family apart. And looking back on his life, he realized life would have been different if I put my family before the bottom. Well, this has happened so many different times. Our loved ones in spirit regret a lot of different things. They regret the time that they wish that they would have gotten to spend with you. Certain life decisions that they made that stopped them from living their best life or stopped others around them from living their best life. And that's their gift to us. Their gift to us from the other side is teaching us how to not make those same mistakes. It's the reason why they watch over us. It's the reason why we have spirit guides. And it's the reason why they put their faith in us because we still have time to live a better life. Wow. Now that was... A really interesting story. I mean, all of your readings are really powerful and interesting. Is there stories, more stories like that in the book? Did you relate back to um, a lot of stories of real life readings that you've done? Can we read about that? Absolutely. With every, every reading that I do, there's a lesson to be learned. There's a lesson to be told. Because what's so beautiful is this, is that with every single reading, spirit comes through, not just with a direct message for their loved one, but something that they learned from the other side or that can be learned from the other side. So all throughout my book, you're going to find everything. And I mean everything. I have learned this far about crossing over and what the souls have learned from their journey from transitioning from earth to heaven. Listen, like I said, we've got some diehard fans and you're one of the most interesting people I have ever met. And I'm sure others can agree. So I feel like your fans and followers and those who are on the waiting list to get this book have some really interesting questions for you. Okay. So we're going to do one of our favorites. What's that? Rapid fire questions. Okay. And they're pretty juicy. And I want you to be a hundred percent honest when I ask these. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. What is the most unusual message you have received from the spirit world? Oh my God. The first thing that I so (laughs) No, no, no. It's actually not the most unusual message. It's where it occurred. I'll never forget. For some reason, (laughs) when I'm on the toilet, taking a shower, shaving, my most intimate moment, spirit tries to come through and deliver messages. I think that's the craziest thing because there are no, there are no customer service hours when it comes to the afterlife. No, I can attest to that. This one's good. Have you ever not wanted to deliver one? Oh my God. My chest is tightening up even when you're asking me this. Yes, because there are so many times when I'll talk to somebody and there'll be a piece of information there and I don't know how the person's going to receive it. So yeah, I do get nervous delivering messages, but I always tell people the truth because they know, and I know it's going to help them to heal. Again, this is very interesting because as you just said, you never know when to deliver. So can you tell when someone has the psychic gift? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Just by looking at them. Just by looking at them, just by being in their presence. So do you receive a message saying, Hey, listen, they're one of you. Yeah. It's kind of like that. I hear, I hear spirits telling me they can hear you too, or they can, they can hear us. Yeah. And I've actually been on a few of your events. I do. I'm like, this number one fan. You do say that a lot. You can 
pick up instantly. You say, I hear that you, you know, see, see people and hear messages as well. Just like me. It's almost like when I look at them, there's like this, just this aura about them. I just know. Wow. Now, what is the most surprising thing that you have learned about the afterlife? And can we read it in the book? You can. And basically it's that pets can speak in the afterlife. I think that that is like the most, I don't know. I think it's kind of bizarre. I think it's creepy. I don't think most people think it's creepy. If you're listening. (laughs) No, don't talk to me. When I think of that, I think about like Sabrina, the teenage witch, where like the cat talks. Like I'm not ready for that level. I'm not ready for that level. But pets can speak in the afterlife and we can speak to them and they can hear and they can understand. Next question. If little cinnamon roll died, don't come to Matt. Wait, don't say that. They can come to me. I'm fine with talking to your pets. I don't want to hear from my pets. I'm all sad. Okay, I'm glad you clarified that then. I'm happy with them being silent. I need one silent soul within my life because I have a loud wife, I have a loud child, and I have the dead. Have you ever encountered a spirit with a humorous or playful personality such as yourself? Yes, I love those types of souls because sometimes, listen, are you able to bust each other up? Like back and forth on the other side. Yeah, sometimes they make me laugh with some of the things that they show me. But the funny part is, is that I'd rather talk to souls like that than souls that are boring because sometimes you have some boring souls that come through. Mm -hmm. Well, as you say, and I'm sure what you talk about in the book too, is that they kind of come through in their personality, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if they were quiet, they're going to be a little bit more quiet on the other side. But I don't know if I see ones because, you know, (laughs) they're on to talk to. This is really an interesting question. Have you ever encountered anybody from the spirit world from a totally different time period? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And you know, it's cool when you're doing readings and you're in a time period of like the 50s or the 60s or whatever. I mean, I've had readings of from like where souls have come through and showed me what happened like the 1800s or whatever, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, you have a lot of war vets and yeah, yes, really yes, things like that. But you know, I think the coolest part to me, because I'm not like interested in, in, in history, sorry. <laughs> so it doesn't like pique my interest when I see that. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm back in school. Well, but you I get like, a front row seat. Yeah. I like, like the 50s, 60s, because like, I yeah. think about my grandparents and what life was like back for them. For it's them. relatable. Yeah. It's relatable. That's the word. What advice would you give someone seeking to develop their own psychic abilities? Figure out what your gift is. How are you psychic? We all have our own antenna, right? Where we pick up on messages from the other side. How are you gifted? Do you get visions? Do you hear spirit? Do you see spirit? Do you get dreams of spirit? Once you figure that out, you can start receiving messages yourself. Just like that. So by opening yourself, you kind of turn it on. That's it. The light switch. Yes. And then can they turn it off if they get scared? Well, they can. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, if I was you, I wouldn't do it. I'd never turn my gift off. Well, speaking of maybe shutting it off. How, how do, do you protect you yourself process from negative energy coming in? Oh, so this is a good one. So the cool part is, is that you have angels, guides, and loved ones that are with you always. And evil energy, evil, evil spirits cannot enter your life unless you let them. So don't play with things like Ouija boards. Don't play with things like ghost boxes or go power. Don't go look for trouble is what I'm trying to tell you, and you'll be completely fine. Well, have you ever encountered spirits who might have important warnings or premonitions about the future that we kind of need to oh every day every day protected of as well yes but they only warn us if we can change it so if we can change the future if there's something that can be changed souls will come through during readings and warn us about certain things and if they're warning us it's because it's something that's fixable and i have a question because this yes. is from personal experience how do you balance oh jeez. <laughs> if you do how do you balance your work as a psychic medium and, you know, being on tour and writing books and sharing what you learn daily from the other side. How do you balance that with your normal way of thinking or your family life or the pets? Well, as you know, it's really hard, right? It's really hard because being a medium is an all day job. It's not just my job. It's my life. And I think you know that more than ever. So, you know, and I, I really don't know because for me, it's just, it's just my life. You know, yeah. as you know, and I know that you bother me all the time because she's always like, Alexa's always like, who the hell are you talking to? Because there's times where I have conversations by myself. Well, you and mumble like, in the distance. Yeah. Well, listen, if I'm mumbling, I'm talking when to anyone ask him. Well, listen, it's like when the doorbell rings, you got to answer it. You know, if, they, if, if someone's trying to get my attention from the afterlife, I got to listen to what they say. Do you ever, um, does it come to you unexpectedly sometimes in public places where you're like, oh my God, I did not expect to want to read someone right now. Or like, I did not want to approach this person oh, because absolutely. you can't shut it off all the time. Yeah. Because the thing is, is this, is that when a spirit has a message and that's the key is that, you know, do I see souls with everybody? Yes. But a, but a soul for them to come through during a reading has to have a message. It was something that they didn't get to say. 
Maybe you, they left this world on unsaid terms. Maybe it is that now you're getting married and your grandmother just wants you to know that she's going to make your wedding next week. Whatever that specific message is, that's when they use me to deliver it. I feel like I can answer this too, but how do you stay grounded and centered while tapping into the spiritual realm? So first of all, it's having strong faith, but also the one thing to ground yourself is to empty your thoughts out so you can clearly receive the messages from spirit. So now I'm just like, I don't know, it's in my muscle memory. Now when I go to sit down for, to do a reading, when I'm at my desk, when I'm in my reading space, the messages just flow in. Well, I am very excited to read these stories in the book from people that you've actually read. Um, so I want to talk about the book. Yes. Um, what enough about you let's hear about the book which is also about you um what prompted you to write this like why did you feel there was a need to write don't wait until you're dead well i think the title says it all why should we not wait (laughs) here's the reason why because there's so many souls that go to the other side and they say the same thing that our that our elders talk about and that is if only I knew what I knew now, if only I knew sure. about X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z, and what do they know? Well, I got to tell you, the biggest regret that souls have is that they didn't follow their dreams, goals, and desires when they were alive. You know, there's things here in this world that block us. Anxiety, worry, limiting beliefs, self-concerns, all of these things block us from finding our true path. And, you know, the one thing that souls always tell me is imagine what life would have been like if I just went and didn't have fear, didn't have worry, didn't have anxiety. Imagine what life would have been like if I pursued my true, my true vision. Right. And that's what they want us to do. They want you to live the best life possible and not to be afraid of your challenges, dreams, and worries. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I I really, really can't wait to read this. I mean, I've kind of been behind the scenes. I've kind of listened in on some of your book meetings, but to actually have the copy and how beautiful it came out. I mean, it's just so exciting. I can't wait to read this one. All of them are great, but this one in particular, I'm really, really excited about. So before we like really get diving in into this book, um, what are your top three unexpected things or moments that we get to read about in this book? Oh my God. The first is what happens when you die, because I think that this is going to help so many people who are afraid of death, dying in the afterlife. The only reason why you're afraid is that you don't know what to expect. That's what the souls tell me. All the souls (laughs) I talked to that were afraid to die tell me they didn't know what was going to happen. Well, I'm going to show you what to happen. Second thing that you're going to be able to understand is about what actually happens in heaven. What is heaven like? Who's there? Who's waiting for us? Who do we meet? What's that reunion like? Whoa. And three is about the soul messages that they have for us here on earth. How can we take, imagine if you could take all the information from your spirit guide, your angels, and your loved ones and apply it to your life now. That's what this book is going to teach you. And one last thing is at the end of this book, you're going to get to do your own life review. So at the very end, you're going to be able to go through this just like the souls do. You don't have to wait till you're dead. That's why I wrote the title because at the very end, you're going to go through your own life review and get the chills. Whoa, you're going to go through I your own life this. reviews. Yes. Surprise. Oh my gosh. And you're going to be able to understand your life purpose, the meaning of your life, and you'll be able to understand even your challenges and past decisions more clearly. Speaking of that, you get really honest and vulnerable in this book um, and you go into detail about living the life that you want now so that you don't have any regrets in the future. So can you tell us more about how you believe you can help people do that now with this book? Absolutely. I mean... The best thing that I can tell you, the best way to start living life now is aligning with your spirit guide, your guardian angels, and your loved ones. When you align with them, you start to follow your true life path. What I mean by that is that a lot of people are receiving information from their spirit guides, angels, and loved ones, but they don't know what to look for. They don't know what the signs mean. They don't know what their spirit guide is trying to tell them. They don't know what their guardian angel is trying to tell them. We have things like close calls, which I talk about in the book, near-death experiences, wake-up calls that have happened. Have you ever come close to death where you thought you were going to die? Maybe you almost drowned, or maybe it was where you almost had a head-on collision. I know I'm making you nervous, but these are actually wake-up calls from the other side that are trying to get you to see a deeper uh, purpose for your life. And we're going to talk about that in the book. Well, so what do you really want your readers and your fans and people that have this book to take away from it? What do you want them to finish the book? Like close that last page. What do you want them to take away with them? I want them to know that it's never too late. I'm going to say it again. It's never too late. If you're living and breathing, it's because God has a plan for you. 
And it's because there's still meaning for your life. If someone was in the airport on their way to a flight and they happened to see this and you just happened to come out of the clear blue sky to convince them why they should get this book in 60 seconds, what would you say? Tell us right now. I would say, sir, don't wait till you're dead. Go to the store. Buy my book because I have a message for you. Whoa. Okay. How's that for a sale? So not only is this available to read and available to order now, I hear you have a special announcement. Yes. And it all starts. Hold on. I have it shut stuffed in my seat here. It all starts with this gold pen. So what I want you to know is that I'm going to be doing a limited edition signed copy, gold signed editions. We only have, we only have a couple of hundred of these books that I'm going to be doing. So that being said, every single one of the books that are at Premier Collectibles, you can actually order your signed copy. It is signed by me. So I'm going to take it, sign it. Let me show you. And all your books are going, to, are going to be signed in gold. And there's going to be a special cover page that's going to say this book is a limited edition signed by Matt Frazier. You can get it at the Premier Collectibles website. Right so, now? Like right, right now. now. This right is now. available right now. Oh, absolutely. They can just... have your signature soon. In their hands. Have you been seeing what I've been doing for the past <laughs> two weeks? I've been signing so much. My, look, at, I can't, I can, look at, I have this Band-Aid on my finger because my fingers, I have like a callus well, right Well, listen, these are going to be very limited. I mean, they need to go to signspiritbook.com now. Yes. And by crazy. the way, you these guys. These are going to go quick. This is only the, the preview copy. When you get your hard copy, it's going to be so, so, so gorgeous. This is just the book. So this way you can proof it before getting it to your doorstep. But what I want you to know is that your book is going to come bound hardcover with that special book plate inside so that you generally know the dead can be my witness that I've signed every single book by hand. Signspiritbook.com. Although, awesome. although I was thinking of, I, I was thinking about teaching you my signature and making you sign them all for me. Listen, <laughs> I am a little biased, but I have to say, I mean, what you have put in this book, it, it's just incredible. It's your biggest book yet. Yep. So it has like the most information I feel. And it, this is just so exciting. I'm so proud of you. Oh, and you, I know honey. how hard uh, you've worked on this book and how hard you worked on those signatures <laughs> as well. Um, so that would make a really great gift as well. I mean, go get one copy, go get two, go get four, give them to your whole family on Christmas this year. Oh, <laughs> that would true. be amazing. And um, again, you can go to signspiritbook.com and get that special copy with the gold writing. I hear you have another announcement too. I do. So tell us about yes. <laughs> I honestly don't tell know what us it is. about what happens when they purchase an autographed copy. It gets sent to your door with the book plate, and you get entered to win a yeah. free reading, a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with you. Oh, I forgot all about this. Yes, yes. Oh, look, I even got it upside down. Listen. I got so excited. If you get a copy of this book, yes, that's right, we're doing the giveaway. Oh my God, you guys gotta remember, all right? I've been working on this book for literally two years. I know, I know. And I'm again, I'm so proud of you. This book is unbelievable. You can get your signed gold autographed copy from signspiritsbook.com and you might even win a reading, a free one-on-one -on -one reading with you. That's rare because even I can't get that much time from you lately. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know, I never do private reading. Since the television show, being on tour, writing my books, you know, uh, being a dad, unfortunately, there's no time for private readings, but I set some time aside just for all of you because I wanted to personally thank you for going out and getting this book. So by you going and purchasing your signed copy, you're also going to be entered into a giveaway Ooh. where you can get a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me. And I cannot wait to see who that's going to go to. That's really exciting. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Go to signspiritbook.com and get it right now. And I just think this is going to be incredible. So head to signspiritsbook.com, get your special edition copy with that gold signature, and you might even be able to win a free reading. Insane.